keep in mind when we went through the validation protocol we completed the OQ we've, we've got our successful production qualification done this data the dashed line information was saved as that reference data it is plastic pressure in front of the screw it's volumetric flow information that's critical to plastic property characteristics I've saved that and they become the baseline of my measure of whether I'm running to my validated setup. Now when you add cavity pressure into the mix of this data acquisition there's an additional meter that will look at the cavity pressure curves and give you reference to whether you have uh, a match on those profiles. And the scale of all of this is, is, uh, is managed by the user uh, based on your good part, your good percentage uh, match warning, and then uh, a reject type configuration. So again, from the management perspective, wanting to know, needing to know whether or not your processes are running from the validated setup, there's a significant improvement in efficiencies and, and comprehension with information available like this as opposed to the walk across the production floor and wondering uh, if we're running to validated setups or not. Okay, um, have data to prove everything you do. Medical applications in particular are high liability or can be high liability applications. Um, about uh, it was in March of this year, uh, we were contracted by uh, a medical device company um, to work with their supplier uh, on a problem. Back in uh, October of 2007, uh, the mold, this was a 16 cavity mold producing a component for an inhaler part. Uh, they'd had a non-conforming condition come out of this mold and they removed it from production. They no longer were allowed to run production on this tool. Uh, that was in October of 2007. They tried to revalidate the mold on two different occasions and RJG was cons uh, called in as a, a consulting group in March of this year. The molder um, had been running the EDART system, been a long time customer of RJG. They had a server system installed so they were archiving all their data and we were able to go back literally on an individual shot basis to a point in September one month prior to the, the uh, non-conforming condition and find a machine pressure setting change that had caused that situation and had changed the airflow output in this part. So that's the level of traceability often required from medical molders is to be able to say for a specific part I can access the information from the process that produced that part. Uh, you may need it to defend your position, you may need it to verify your position. And that's what the data acquisition system should be able to do for you. So we designed the current EDART system to save all the data all the time and we developed effective file compression software to be able to manage those, those large files. So um, it's all there um, and it's all accessible in the situation where you need to verify your settings and the type of information that's there is quite extensive. Um, this would be a, a historical look at a certain point in time. Uh, so January 11th on 2007. Uh, this is the, where we need to go back. We need to take a specific shot. We need to understand what was happening in our production at that point in time. Information we can gather gives uh, indication of viscosity variation. Um, we've got notes that we input into our system at that time that were specific to the process adjustments that were being made. Um, but that level of detail is often necessary. And again, we talk about cavity pressure transducers. Um, there are occasions when the machine only data is not good enough. There are occasions because uh, in this example because of the compressibility of thermoplastics you can have something that looks very capable and consistent on your machine but when you go inside the cavity of the mold because of that compressibility of thermoplastics and the pressure loss that occurs through the system we have an entirely different set of circumstances inside the cavity of the mold. 
So again, earlier I talked about wall thickness, material selection, flow geometry. There's a number of variables that contribute to that, but uh, there will be those situations where cavity pressure information will be required to manage that process. Once we have gathered our data, the tool can be used during the DOE phase uh, to help understand what data correlates to the part characteristics. Um, whether or not you have pressure transducers in the mold, you always want to pay attention to material viscosity. Know what it's doing all the time. It's a critical variable that will influence part characteristics. And in this example, we're looking at uh, a mold cavity pressure transducer as well. This is a 1,400, 1,499 cycles are on this trend chart. It's about 13 hours maybe, eight, remember exactly, might be about 13 hours of run. And when we think about uh, SPC as applied to quality standards, quality control in our organization, I have four abnormal conditions that occurred in that 13 hour run. Other than that, inside the cavity of the mold, my process is very capable. My pressure transducer, my pressure information inside the cavity of the mold is very stable. Very little variation, but in four random events in this 13 hours, I had abnormal conditions. Certainly we can see when we overlay all of that, we can see the variation that was there. We have, it was a, a significant drop in the pressure inside the cavity of the mold. My parts are not going to be identical. And we need to be able to tell someone where those parts are at. And if we can't identify where those parts are, we know that they already went out the door. So the ability to use data over time in real time, establish control limits on this, and be able to identify before the mold opens whether conditions in the cavity are the same or if they've changed, and automatically segregate that product. So we continue the focus now on the cavity pressure. Pressure variations inside the cavity of the mold have direct correlation to this entire list of issues. Sink, flash, short shots, dimensions, structural integrity, gloss gradient. Um, so again, depending on the application, you may uh, very well do very well and improve your capability with pressure transducers. And to wrap things up, um, validation doesn't have to be so hard. When you have a systematic approach, you go through your defined checklist, you look in the right information, you're doing the right things up front, saw, fixing design problems early, um, have a data-based approach, use a data acquisition system to gather information. Um, the, uh, the validation process can be much more efficiently managed and effective. Is it for real? Yes, it's for real. This is the top uh, list of the top 15 medical device manufacturers taken from MD and DI Magazine February of this year. Uh, four companies on this list are implementing at a level of everything that I've discussed today. They use scientific molding during the validation process. They use scientific molding techniques to transfer molds and they are not having to re rerun their entire OQ phase of validation at when they make that transfer. Um, and they're using the data acquisition system so that they have traceability to all parts produced. They have alarm limits established on critical to value data so they can automatically segregate parts. So it's real. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's not a... Uh, um, uh, a Lake Wobegon effect. Uh, there's people doing this in the business today. Uh, and there's an additional four or five customers on this list there somewhere along that path of implementation. Our focus is, is uh, hands-on uh, practical application of scientific molding. And then our, our equipment business that is the data acquisition uh, cavity temperature sensors, cavity pressure sensors, and overall machine monitoring uh, for the reasons we've already described in this presentation.